folks at home welcome back to the backyard bass pond and sorry for the lack of uploads lately we've been working really hard on building a new five acre pond for these backyard pets and in case you missed our last videos we bought an 80 acre farm that we're going to build this pond on and probably for sure bonnie and clyde are going to move into it maybe some of the turtles and potentially some of the bluegills so for this new pond build it's a lot more complicated than the backyard pond was because whenever you have that much water involved you got to take the right steps to make sure it lasts 10 to 20 years so we've gotten some hydraulic engineers involved some geotech engineers we've got the pond designed and laid out we're also doing some soil samples so we're going to take you along through that process and all of the steps it takes to build a body of water that big so here's a look at all the pets everybody's doing good hadn't had any issues with the herons coming back this year and i'm pretty sure that most of the baby ninja turtles have all migrated over to this pond now we've been heavily feeding them and this is jekyll the one we think may become a state record bluegill he's a chunky all right folks let's take a look at what i've been spending so much time doing the pond design so right over here where we have the blue and pink flags that's going to be the corner of the dam so the dam is going to stretch from here all the way to that ridge over there it's going to be a pretty long dam there's a pink flag all the way up there on top of that hill you can barely see it that's the length of the dam and five acres is a pretty big lake because it's going to go all the way up over the top of that hill that's going to be the last little shallow pocket over there there's the fallen oak tree it's going to go back over there and kind of end on this ridge and work its way back through here but the step that we just completed is you have all this area right here that you're going to excavate out and with a dam that stretches that length you're going to need a lot of clay to build that core up and so we just went in and did some core drilling right here and basically they take a rig and go down 15 to 20 feet deep and see what type of soils and clay materials we have here on the property so for instance we did one of the borings right here this is going to be along the dam and we went about 17 feet down right there and you can see you got a little bit of sandy material that's not really good that's not what you're looking for but we also had some really good clay you can see all this this is kind of a sandy clay mixture but then you get to this stuff right here it's rock hard and that's the thing you don't really want it to be rock hard on the dam area you want kind of a mixture of this hard clay and a little bit of sand that way it doesn't stretch and compact and you end up busting or having leaks in your dam so this is my first time working with the geotechs and doing any type of core drilling but it was a pretty cool process we drilled five different holes within the lake and the average depth was 15 to 20 feet we actually ran into a water table in one of those down around 12 and a half feet so it's going to be interesting to see what we end up having to do in that area but now we have a complete sample of all the different types of soil starting at ground level all the way down to 15 feet deep and that's about as deep as we're going to build this lake so we bagged up all the samples they're going to get sent off to a lab and then the geotech engineers will do a full analysis on it and they're also going to run a permeability test to see if this particular soil will hold water or if we're going to have to bring in a clay or bitnite layer so the one good thing is even if we don't have good clay in this area if we have it anywhere else on the property we can get it from there and haul it over and i had a good feeling we had some good clay in this one particular spot so we drilled down about 10 feet there and it was 10 feet of solid clay so definitely a good thing just in case we need it and you can see we've had a lot of erosion right here because all of the property drains down into this area and goes right back in there to a creek so we're going to build that dam up right here and all that water is going to flow from about 60 acres down here into the pond so we shouldn't have any issues with keeping a full pool but we also did a lot of studies on annual rainfall and that helped us design we're going to have an emergency spillway over here we're going to have it a little bit wider than most ponds because we have so many hurricanes down here that could come and drop 10 to 12 inches of rain and here's another look at our big ancient red oak that fell over during hurricane sally so we've talked to some guys we got a good plan for what we're going to do with it so to start off all of the long limbs that we can't really do much with those are going to go into the pond we're going to cut those off and use them as structure for fish out here in the pond look at the root system on this guy still unbelievable every time i see it but this tree was so big that whenever it fell over its root system pulled up other trees with it but this is our plan so we may cut the root system off right there at the trunk and actually put the trunk of it and the roots out there in the pond as kind of some fish structure and then we're going to take everything from there up which is a lot of wood and we're going to make some tables and some signs out here at the farm so we'll be updating you on that here pretty soon whenever we get the guys in here to cut the tree up all right so where i'm standing right now is going to be a peninsula that's the corner of the dam that we started at that's a look at the other corner of the dam where that pink flag is 
and the shallow pocket is going to be all the way up there on top of that hill that's going to be the shallowest part of the lake but the cool part about this is we're going to dig ditches we're going to build islands out here in the open this is all going to be water out here peninsula right here where i'm standing and you can see there's still plenty of land outside of this pond for maybe even keeping a deer field back there building future ponds out here there's still a lot a lot of land out here for future projects but this is where all the fun begins we're going to have all of our wood piles aerators different things like that we're going to build a pier out here right off this peninsula we got lots of ideas that we're going to be designing here soon and if you guys have any other ideas leave a comment down below because it's not too late for us to add some unique features into this pond build all right folks time to show you guys our latest project we just got this shed but what's inside of it is what's really going down so I just got power and ethernet ran in here because we are about to mount what I call the eye in the sky. That's what's gonna live stream our next pond build. So from the time we start digging until the pond is full of water, you guys will be able to tune in and follow along with this progress. So maybe more on how I'm setting all that up later, but it's time to go get this guy mounted. All right, now we're up here on the other end of the property. You can see we planted all 80 acres in either ryegrass or like we did down there, five acres in a green field for the deer. All right, Liz, putting the finishing touches on her garden. Leave a comment down below if you think the deer are gonna come through and munch on these winter veggies. They got a lot of grass out there they could eat. Sarah's been mostly playing. You can tell I set up a game camera and see what critters were coming out here in the garden. So now let's take a look at some of the trail cam photos we've gotten. And while we hadn't had any deer come to the garden yet, two bunny rabbits found it right away. They got a knack for finding them carrots. And now we have two little piglets that are locals out here at the farm. And I call them Hakuna and Matata. They're out here every day. And as of now, they're not a problem. But I know that hogs can multiply really fast. So we're keeping a close eye on them. We also confirmed we do have a bobcat. We were curious about some pictures in one of the last videos if it was a house cat or a bobcat but it does have a little bit of a tail which is kind of weird but guys this place is loaded with deer it is nothing to see 15 or 20 deer out here a lot of different bucks for you hunters if you ever want to attract deer plant a peanut field it'll definitely bring them in from all over and we got a cool shot of a hawk and then also a random dog that just showed up and if you've seen any of the previous farm videos this is a orange fox squirrel we call foxy still out here getting the last of the peanuts But we also have seen another fox squirrel that is a gray and whitish color. We're going to have to come up with a name for that guy. So in our last farm video, we planted a five acre deer patch that has turned out really good. The soil here is great for growing different stuff and the deer are piling in. Look at all the deer hoof prints and it is nothing to see 20 or 30 deer out here grazing at a time now that we got that camera mounted you can watch them night and day it's step into my office here gotta love using the dove bucket to hold the mouse but check this out so this is the camera we just got installed and this is the night vision look at some of the deer out on the farm so really cool that you can scan the whole property watch all the wildlife, but most importantly, watch the entire pond build process from an aerial view. So this camera's night vision really is crazy, but I love sitting here watching all of the different wild game that come out on the farm. <laughs> and then you got Hakuna and Matata out here just running around like crazy. They're literally out here every single day. And some more shots of the big herds of deer that come through the area. Alright, we can't have one of these videos without showing Moby, so it's time to let the big dog eat.
And here's a good shot of two of the turtles out sunning. I'm pretty sure this is Ranger, and I kind of think it's Master Splinter, but it's definitely one of the smaller Ninja Turtles. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. We should be beginning the pond build next month, so make sure you're subscribed. You're definitely not going to want to miss out on that one, but hope you all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time. Can tell you people they were the devil's children.